There is certainly in the popular imagination a confusion regarding experience and phenomenology. Most people put, I mean, you, you still see it even in, you know, people who should know better. They refer to the phenomenological aspects of something. What they mean is tactility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> what you, what I, there, one of the interesting aspects to me of Dalibor's notion of a latent world is it always has a positive value for him, i.e. it's access to something that gives us um, potentially a depth and richness of meaning. Whereas what's in fact latent is more like what Meloponti described under the, you know, this business of we don't, the, the, the impossibility of an ontological void. Um, we are already on the way to meaning, and yet as soon as we try to grasp it, we leave out meanings that we also have. So there's a spontaneous dimension to it, and there's an articulate dimension to it. And the the relation, the vertical generally stands for the horizontal. Right? You want to refer to the two dimensions of spatiality being as ontic and ontological. One hopes to, that the vertical will stand for the horizontal. Um, as I, I prefer something along those lines rather than the chiasmus that Merleau-Ponty in fact gets into. Um, I don't think you're ever ignorant completely. And, it, and on the one hand, and on the other, it's certainly possible to get so wrapped around knowledge as words and language that you end up in a kind of um, philosophical or theological forensics that you know, means in order to hold the primary meaning in place, you have the capacity, the intelligence, the literacy, which certainly exceeds mine, to, you know, to do a kind of Aquinas. It was one of the few attempts to put all of being in a book. <laughs> um, and it's, in, it's interesting how rare that is. I mean, it's indicative of um, both an approach to being that requires the, that many words and those kinds of words, those very careful discriminations. And um a a capacity to do it a capacity to align knowledge with experience the what's going through my mind at the same time is the complete collapse of that articulated dimension in something like rudolf otto's notion of the mysterium tremendum where the experience of the divine or the sacred, it's already a concept, is, you know, of the sublime. It's fundamentally emotional. And the indecible of Le Corbusier is an aspect of that, whereby one is simply reduced to one's finitude. The other thing about the knowledge, and one of the key things about the knowledge, and why I speak of language as linguality, is that it, and I call it the, I put it in with all the other modes of involvement, is that it's one aspect of communication. It's one aspect of sharing, which of course always involves conflict as well as collaboration. Um, and the business of writing and of sharing puts a different value or performing, puts a different value on the on the right or on the book or on the performance um, than just the raw experience. So the what you're calling knowledge would I suggest be in fact one's cultural situatedness. And you no, know, sometimes you do that just with your body by bowing or shaking hands, depending on where you are. Other times you do that through long texts, 